Thursday. Let me see if Restream wants to work today. Let's see here. Apparently it is supposed to be going out on Facebook and LinkedIn. So we shall see. Let me know when you guys are on. I don't even see it yet. Okay, there we go. Perfect, I see it on Facebook. Let me see if I can get it pull up on LinkedIn. Okay, awesome. How are you guys doing? Let me know when you are here in the comments. I see everything now. I am <laughs> trying to sit in my chair, but I have a little fur muffin uh, behind me sharing like half of my chair because she is getting so big, the puppy. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn off my notifications. Hey Chris, how are you? Thanks for joining me. How is everyone? Give me a sec. Okay, so per usual, this is my once a month LinkedIn Live Ambitious Outcome. So thank you guys so much for joining me where I hop on once a month on this Thursday, second Thursday of the month, and I help you carve a better path to visibility, trust, and faster growth. So these sessions are for you all where I share my insights on what's working right now on LinkedIn and personal branding so I can help you all uh, build an influential brand. So thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Chris, noted on the audio. Hey, Carolyn, thanks so much for being here. So um, today we are going to talk about LinkedIn content primarily, but I'm also gonna tell you a couple other things uh, regarding LinkedIn. It's been happening in the past week. I'm trying to get comfortable in my chair. I wish you guys could see what I'm dealing with right now with uh, the, the little baby. So we launched a new brand recently. I don't know if y'all saw that, Luminetics. It is our LinkedIn focused brand. So what we do at my agency is we help build influential personal brands for executives, uh, high performing entrepreneurs, professionals, and also teams. So if you ever, uh, you yourself, or you ever know anyone who could leverage our services and our solutions, um, would love an introduction. We offer 15% affiliate commission. So feel free to send people my way. If you know anyone wanting to up their LinkedIn game on the thought leadership front or companies looking to really get serious about LinkedIn and content marketing. So we are going to talk about that today, actually content marketing and LinkedIn. Hey, Laura on Facebook for muffin. That sounds inappropriate. Oh my God. It totally does. <laughs> oh man. I'm glad you like my backdrop. This is the challenge though, with this backdrop. So if I go too far back, like y'all can see the sides, like you can see my office. And then if I, so I have to get super close and then I can't move like my chair. I, I can't move my chair or it'll like fall or I don't know what. And then I have this dog behind me too. So, you know, it's a never a dull moment here. So first off, I want to invite, I, I have a couple of things before we get into the content. One, I want to invite you to something awesome. I sent it out to my newsletter. By the way, if you, if you want to get my weekly LinkedIn newsletter tips, um, let me know and I can post a link for you. I have a, a brand new newsletter called LinkedIn Insiders where I send uh, weekly tips and I actually just sent out an invite to them today and y'all are invited as well. So next week, I am excited to announce I am going um, hosting a live webinar for LinkedIn, actually, the LinkedIn Stories team. So it'll be on LinkedIn Stories page on LinkedIn. And it is uh, the first webinar I've done in a while. I used to do loads of webinars. And so this is the, the first one I've done in over a year myself, my own slides. And I will be talking about five simple steps to build your personal brand leveraging LinkedIn. So I'll post a link here and you guys can register for that. And I'll also uh, share about it tomorrow too. So be on the lookout for my post tomorrow where um, you can sign up for that as well. But I'm super excited about it. It's next Thursday at 11 a.m. So an hour before right now, it's an hour before 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. And I will be sharing my tips for the first time. This is the first time I've ever done this webinar and I'm super excited. It's filled with some pretty awesome memes. I kind of went meme overload here. So it's pretty entertaining though. I think you guys will like it. So I'm excited about that. So that's my special announcement for y'all. And I will um, try to, there's too much going on right now. I can't handle all of these different windows and whatnot. So I will try to post the link um, when I'm done here and then we can get into it. So first of all, 
I have been hearing lots of stories about LinkedIn cracking down recently. And what do I mean by cracking down? I mean, people that are sending too many connection requests um, where people are saying they don't know them. So they're getting their connection request denied. They're either getting in LinkedIn jail or they're getting banned from LinkedIn entirely. So because there are so many spammers on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn's trying to get a hold of this right now and they are being a lot more careful about what they let slide. And a lot of people are using automation tools, which they can tell when you're doing this. And so they are literally flagging people and booting them from LinkedIn. So I was in a Facebook group a couple weeks ago, a LinkedIn Facebook group, and they, I, I saw a, a guy post that he was completely banned from LinkedIn they, without warning. So they usually give you warnings, right? Like if you're being too aggressive with your um, connection request, they usually warn you. This individual, his account was completely shut down from LinkedIn, like without warning at all. So I'm just telling you guys this before we get into more LinkedIn stuff here to be careful. So if you're using automation, you might wanna stop or at least tone it down quite a bit. Um, the, the threshold I'm hearing is under 50 connection requests a day. Even if you are um, doing this manually, you wanna keep it to under 50 a day. So just a heads up for people because people are getting in trouble in trouble with LinkedIn uh, right now for doing this. And I think it's only going to get worse. And what I mean by worse is I think LinkedIn's only going to start cracking down more and more because it's kind of getting out of control, the amount of, of spammers. And so they have to take measures to do this. And unfortunately, if, if they feel like you are abusing their system in any way, they're going to flag you for that. So just be careful. Hey, Eric, you ask, is that a real backdrop? It is a backdrop and it's real but it's like a mesh kind of. So I have like a, a tripod that I put it on. It's pretty cool. Any, anyvoo.com, A-N-Y-V-O-O.com is where I got it from. So let's get into posts that are working right now on LinkedIn. So what types of posts are working? So obviously there's all sorts of different types of posts that you can post on LinkedIn and, um, different posts for different goals, right? And that's what you want to talk about. So Laura says, I have the same issue with my green screen chair. Totally get it. My dog is too big to get in my chair though. <laughs> yes. People trying to get me back into automation software. Nope. No, thanks. I agree, Laura. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it unless you're being really, really, really smart about it and pretty conservative about it too. So back to the, um, LinkedIn. One, personal posts are working really well right now. So if you guys have been following me and, and you attend these lives before, you know I'm all about humanizing your brand, right? Whether that's your personal brand or your company's brand. You, you, have, to, you have to come from a place of value as a real human being that genuinely cares. And how people connect with you is by sharing those personal experiences. So what makes you human? What makes you unique? And so what I've been seeing on the personal front it's just random personal posts that have been working really, really well. So one example is um, tell, you know, who you are, like tell your story. So why do you do what you do? Uh, what inspires you, et cetera. So kind of more about like the, the person behind the personal brand, right? So the human being behind the professional and, and how that led you to where you are. Um, another thing I'm seeing is people posting about their significant other. So something that went viral for a few people a couple of weeks ago was like a, an old school picture of them and their sweetheart, if you will, their spouse from back in the day, right? And so it was like this high school picture or something. And they wrote like this little lovey-dovey post about, you know, how much they love their significant other and how much they've been an influence in their life. And stuff like that has been working really, really well recently. It, it's kind of like Facebook-esque, right? In a way, like Instagram-esque, Facebook-esque but it's working on LinkedIn um, because again, it's that human connection that people love. And so when you're able to share personal stories like that, you connect with people on a different level. And I've said this before, I'm not a personal person. I'm not a personal, I am, I'm a very open human being emotionally too. But when it comes to social media, I don't share a whole lot of personal things, right? So I'll apply some stories here and there, but. I am not one to go posting loads of personal stuff. That's just not who I am. But you guys see my personality come through in everything I do. Um, so with that said, my point is 
use whatever is com your comfort level is when it comes to sharing personal things, right? If you're not comfortable sharing it, then don't share it. But I'm encouraging you to find ways to share personal stories to build that rapport with people because people do business with people. And LinkedIn is becoming more of a social media networking channel where people share more personal things than it ever has been in the past. They, they launched LinkedIn Stories, which I'm actually doing a webinar for, right, next week. And LinkedIn Stories, like Instagram Stories and Facebook Stories, it's meant to build that human connection with people. So share, you know, behind the scenes. So I encourage you guys to use LinkedIn Stories as well. But my point here is what's working really well are, are a lot of these personal posts that I've been seeing. For example, um, people posting about how they're getting off Facebook, speaking of Facebook, and how toxic Facebook is and how they deleted their Facebook app. Like stuff like that's been going viral too. So little things about, you know, what you believe in, right? Those, those always work well. So I just, just a word, you know, simple words of encouragement for you guys to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Not too much. I'm not saying do something that makes you feel completely uncomfortable, but growth is uncomfortable. So, you know, don't get too crazy on the personal level. You don't need to share what you ate for breakfast or anything. But, um, you know, for example, I shared this crazy fur baby who does not have her bow in today because I did not have time to brush her and she looks like a hot mess. She looked way cuter yesterday. This is what's behind me in my chair, by the way. Look how big she is. She's massive compared to the last time that I had her on this live. So another, something else that's working well is um, like feel good posts and stories, like random videos and stories that make people feel good. These are, have you noticed that none of this that I've said is related to business yet? Like these are all like very, again, like Facebook, Instagram-ish type posts that are working really well on LinkedIn to just get you in front of more people, right? Um, trends, what's trending right now in people's industry, like current news stories, like news jacking, right? Is what we call this when people, um, take, you know, stories that are, that are going on in our world right now and applying that to what they do, or even just sharing their insights. Um, okay. I'm going to go back and look at the comments here because I've totally missed them. David says, I would have made you a real one out of wood. Oh, thanks, David. You're sweet. Hey, Maude. Thanks so much for hopping on. Joe. Yes, we see your personality, right? That's not hard. <laughs> not hard to see my personality. Eric. True. I see where you're balancing privacy and personality, but I still think we need to see more updates about your newest furry family member. Oh, how? I didn't even know you said that. And then I showed, I showed her to you, Eric. There you go. Yes, she is massive. She's a beast. Um, something else that's working really well on the video front. Okay, so you know, video is huge. Everyone's been telling you guys for years you need to use video, right? Like we've all been here. This is nothing new. Video has continued to boom over the years and it will continue booming. Again, this is not news that you don't know. But if you are hesitant to post videos or go live, something that works really well, I don't know if Joe is still on here, but Joe, for example, has an interview series where he interviews people um, and then he posted on, on LinkedIn and, and YouTube. So if you guys are a little nervous about making videos, the best way to get on camera, the easiest way is to get interviewed by someone. Like I went on Joe's um, show and we had a, a great time and that was easy, you know, obviously it's not, it's not hard for me to do videos, but let's, let's assume it was. It's a lot easier for me to be interviewed by someone on video and have them ask me questions and answer it than it is for me to just randomly come up with a video. I mean, I'm pretty good at it because I've been doing this for a while, but for most human beings, it's, it's a hell of a lot easier if someone's gonna ask you questions and you just sit there and answer them, right? Like that's super easy to do. So I encourage you guys to get on video, get on camera, and if you're nervous about it, start networking with people in your industry who have shows. So it could be a video podcast. Like a lot of people these days are doing podcast videos. So even if they don't take the audio and put it on, on iTunes or whatever the podcast channels are, um, they are doing just like YouTube podcasts or whatever it is and sharing it on social. So you guys can easily go and network with these people on LinkedIn and ask to be interviewed by them on their show. And that's going to get your feet wet and being on camera for one. And it's going to give you great uh, content, video content that you can then repurpose and use again. And you can even turn those into mini clips, right? So you could take a video interview, a 30 minute video interview, or even 20 minutes, obviously reshare that when the person posts it, but you can even take it and splice it down even further and make your own clips from that. 
So I want you guys to don't underestimate the power of leveraging other people's channels to get on video. That is working really well. Interviews are hot right now. That's what a lot of people are doing and it's working really, really well. Hey, Eric. Eric says, can you recommend a software where you can add the subtitles and or front end plates to the video? Juan Pablo, you and your foot. What about making video without you being on camera, like animation? Okay. Um, Joe says, Zub title. Thank you, Joe, for answering that because I don't know because I have a videographer who does my videos for me, so I cannot answer that. But Joe just answered you, Eric. And Joe, you are still on, so thank you. So my, uh, and Joe, you feel free to comment if you have any thoughts on your video interview. But this is another thing too. So for example, you can start your own video interview show where you interview other thought leaders and experts. And that's a great way to get in front of your target audience, target audience and build up your thought leadership. So it kind of goes both ways here. You can be a guest on people's show to get on camera and, and, and showcase you as the thought leader and, and your personality and your experience. Or you can start your own Obviously, I would recommend getting on camera first uh, before you start your own show. I don't know if, you know, you wouldn't want to, you know, chicken chicken before the egg type of situation, uh, cart before the horse. <laughs> so probably get interviewed first before you start your own show. But that's another angle, too, is you can start your own show because that's going to allow you to get in front of people and interview some pretty amazing people. Uh, okay, moving on. I, I could talk about videos all day long, obviously. Um, document posts. Those are working really well right now. So upload a PDF. And then when you upload that PDF, you can, people can scroll through and they can see the rest of the pages. Dolly, you're really cramping my style right now. Jeez. Um, and so you can put, upload that PDF and then you can just, people can scroll through and read that. Those are working really, really well right now. And people are doing, being super creative with them, right? So it's just like, some people put like just a few words per slide, or I say slide, it's kind of a slide. You can make a slide and then export it into a PDF. So I think you can make it in like Google Slides and then export that into PDF and then you can upload it to uh, LinkedIn. But those are working well and people are being really creative about that. So um, that is an idea as well. And then always, you know, post that help people, right? Valuable posts. So this whole time I've been talking for 17 minutes, although most of it wasn't content or not all of it was, I haven't even talked about the business side of content yet. So if, if that's not a sign for you guys, I don't know what is in terms of what I've been seeing working on LinkedIn. Yes, business content works all the time, of course, but you've got to mix it up. You have to share things that aren't business all the time. Even if you're sharing valuable posts, you can relate some things that aren't super businessy. So obviously continue sharing your value and building those uh, relationships with people by sharing your value and helping people out. So what are the biggest, I, I posted a video yesterday about like finding the biggest pain points in your industry and, and doing it, uh, putting your content down by buyer personas, right? Susie Q is I think the name I use, right? So she has these pain points. So I'm going to post these, you know, create these five posts based on these pain points and, and help people. So essentially you just need to know what value you bring to the table how, what challenges you solve for people and then break that into buckets where they have different categories and then you create posts around that. So try polls, try asking people questions, you know, obviously look at comments from people too and see what people are talking about, but always mix up your content. You want to have a really good mix of educational content for people and also stuff that's a little bit more fun. So I've recently tried, you guys have probably seen this. Hey Hugh, thanks for hopping on. Laura, you are finally catching a live. How are we not connected, Laura, by the way, on LinkedIn? I don't even see that we're connected here. Hey, Cheryl, thank you for joining me. Um, okay, let me go back to Laura's post on here. Laura says on Facebook, good, actually well-scripted and super targeted outreach is great. Spam connections are and they're ruining it for everyone. I agree. Am I the only one irritated by Facebook style posts on LinkedIn? I don't like it most of the time, says Laura. It depends, Laura. Some of them are okay, some of them are irritating. I'm with you. Um, but at the end of the day, Laura, get, you gave me this idea. It's all about testing, you guys. Like you have to test to know what works. So I'm telling you what I'm seeing is working on LinkedIn right now, but at the end of the day, everyone's audience is a little bit different. And so you have to test things out to know if it's gonna work or not, or what's, what's resonating. So for example, you guys have probably seen a couple of random posts that are not really my typical posts that I've made um, two weeks ago and then I think the, oh, a couple weeks prior, like a month ago. And it was hold down 
the reaction button to vote for your first email address. So it was, what was your very first email? Hotmail, Yahoo, whatever the other ones are. And that actually blew up. And I stole that idea from someone because I keep seeing these posts come, come up. You guys know what I'm talking about? Where it's like you, you vote for something by holding down the reaction. And so a thumbs up would be AOL and the clapping button would be Yahoo. So I did that and it, I don't even know how many views it has right now. I think it's like 17,000 views, which is way more than I normally get. So that worked really, really well. That was my first time experimenting with this. I'm all about experimenting and I encourage you guys to experiment with your content. If you see something that's working uh, from people that you're following, then try it out. Like apply it to you and, and try it out and see what happens. That's what I did. So this guy who has like an insane amount of followers, he's a massive LinkedIn influencer and he shares random stuff all the time. I don't think he ever shares anything businessy, by the way. And I got the idea from him and I tried it out on the email one and it blew up. And then I tried it again for fun on um, games, the Microsoft. What was your favorite Microsoft game back in the 90s? Like Solitaire, Minesweeper, Ski Free, all of these. And that one didn't do as well, but it still got a decent amount of traction. And that's just fun things. So I posted those on Fridays. First one I posted on Friday, I waited a few weeks and I posted the other one on Friday. And it was just something that I was experimenting with and it worked, it worked well. I'm probably not gonna do it all the time. I don't wanna annoy people. And, and people, I've had people be like, yeah, you're gaming the algorithm there. Like I see how this works, but it, I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care if you think I'm gaming the algorithm. Like I'm trying new things, I'm experimenting. My end game is to get as much awareness as I possibly can for me and my business. And I don't care what y'all think. So sure, I'm gonna experiment and I'm gonna try to game the algorithms, right? Like who, okay. Who cares? Like if people like it, I'm not being sketchy about it. Like it's a fun post, it's fun for people. So again, an example of why you guys need to try new things and look at what other people are doing. Look at what other people are doing and that's working. Not just what other people are doing, but what's working. Look at the engagement on people's posts and look at what works for you. Like what catches your eye when you peruse LinkedIn profiles? So that's another way of, you know, just, just look at whatever one else is doing, but what, what is resonating with you? And then you can apply that in your business. So that is, um, that's what I'm seeing right now. It's working a couple of tips for you when it comes to the content, obviously avoid posting links in your content. Uh, it, it, okay. I still post links in my content for things that I'm just quickly getting up. And like tomorrow I'm going to share a link because it's a LinkedIn link. So I'm sending people, you all, to a LinkedIn register page. So it's on LinkedIn, so it's not a big deal. I shared a press release uh, Tuesday for um, my company, Mod Girl. We obviously created a new brand, Luminetics, and there was a press release, that, press release that went out. And I just shared the direct link because it wasn't a major post that I was gonna spend a lot of time on getting loads of engagement on. So for me, I don't, I don't care that much about that. So I will still post with links when it is not thought leadership content. Does that make sense? So if you guys are just sharing a link to something and it's not really thought leadership content, that's fine, do it, not a big deal. But if you guys are trying to create thought leadership content where you're spending some time putting together your thoughts and making a great post, adding in that hook, right? Always start with the hook, engage them, get them to click that see more button, those are the types of posts that you want to put the comment in the, in the, or the link in the comment section. It's funny. Now that I say this, I get people giving me crap about this. So I'll get people like, Oh, I thought you said you put the link in the comments. I don't see you put it in the comments. I'm like, I can't, I, I'm like watched under a microscope now. And I'm like, I don't mean that for everything. So use your discretion when I'm telling you these things. Um, one to five hashtags tops is what I recommend. I see people doing loads of hashtags. Honestly, I don't feel like they're that effective and it just looks kind of uh, cheap to me. I don't know if that's the right word to use. Spammy, cheap, desperate, those are good words. When you have like 28 hashtags on your post, don't do that. Um, test out what days are performing best for you. So what we have found is like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday works really well for content. Uh, some clients were seeing Tuesdays and Thursdays are best. Other clients were seeing Wednesday is performing best, but typically across the board, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like morning time to a little bit after lunch is working well, but you guys have got to be looking at your, your data and your stats and what you were seeing that's working. So that's another thing is when you post content, you need to pay attention 
to the time that your target audience is on. And time zones matter. So I am on the West Coast, but I work with a lot of people on the East Coast. So I have to consider that three hour time difference in everything I do. And sometimes I forget. And it's just something that I have to be consciously aware of at all times. Okay, I'm going back to the comments here. Lovely LinkedIn. I always have to refresh the, the page to see y'all's comment. Okay. Joe says, if people can leverage Canva to make their own infographics, it's another great avenue to pursue. Oh, that's a really good idea. Canva for that. I like that. Originality is rare with many things being repackaged. Yes, I like that, Joe. Good tip. Laura, end game. Love it. Chris says, I want to post a cool video about JP Morgan. Oh, wait, I guess that might not be so fun. You could probably make it fun, Chris. I have faith in you. Laura says, cannot give up the call to action, Mandy. It's in my blood, LOL. Yeah, girl, I hear you. So yes, call to action, perfect place to put in the comments section, by the way. When you want people to take action, exactly, Chris, East Coast right there, put it in the comments. So that's what I do. So I've been putting uh, follow, you know, I, I started a brand new a newsletter, LinkedIn Insiders, but, you know, subscribe to receive my updates once a week. So I put that in the comments and then I'll put other call to actions in the comments. Check out our new brand, the Luminetics, in the comments. Um, engage with other people's, I'm going to put Dolly down. I think she wants to get down right now. She looks like a hot mess. It's pretty funny. Sorry for your camera day. I didn't even get you camera ready. I'm such a bad mom, well, even though she was ready yesterday. So you also need to, if you guys want to receive engagement on your posts, you have to be strategic about it. You can't just post content, even though it's amazing content and expect that people are going to comment without you commenting on their stuff. It just doesn't work that way. So you either need to spend time uh, every day, every other day, whatever cadence you prefer on posting comments on people's posts that you want to engage with your posts. Because here's what happens. One, the law of reciprocity. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You leave comments on my stuff, I'm gonna most likely leave it on yours. Second thing, LinkedIn knows when you engage with certain people and guess what? They show that content from that individual more to you than other people. So for example, if I am going and I am commenting on Chris, who just made a comment, Chris Lane Jones, let's say I make a comment on his post, it is going to show me more of Chris's content now because I commented on it and vice versa. So when you do this to people and when you comment on their posts, they're going to see more of your stuff and they're going to be, you know, more apt to leave a comment because you left a comment on their posts. So you guys cannot neglect the engagement part of content marketing on LinkedIn. It is huge because without it, posting great content is pointless. It is pointless unless you have engagement. Honestly, it is. So you have got to find a way to build engagement on your posts by helping other people out. That's the best way to do it. So, hey, Arthur, thanks so much for hopping on. One way you can do this, if you're not already a part, uh, they call them pods, engagement groups, engagement pods. And I recommend getting into a legit one uh, with good people, but you can easily create your own. So get a group together of, of colleagues, you know, five to 10 of you that uh, want to help each other out and you, you all want to boost your content and just start a LinkedIn message thread where you just, every time you post something, you post it in there and then your friends in that group, they leave a comment and they leave a like. It's really simple. And so that's a way that you can guarantee engagement on all your posts. So you guys have to be thinking about these things before you post content. You have to be spending time engaging in other people's posts. I don't care if you're doing this manually one by one, or if you're in a group with people where you all help each other out, it doesn't matter, but you cannot neglect leaving comments on people's posts. Okay. The second thing is, um, Hey Megan, Megan says, don't forget to be social on social media. Good point. That's exactly what I'm talking about, girl. Yeah, the platforms reward you for it. it. I mean, that's what it is. Like these are social media platforms for a reason. It's not just to post content and, and get sales and, and see you later. It is to build relationships and to engage with people. So that's what you have got to do. You can't neglect that. Lynn says, what live streaming platform do you use? I use Switcher with Restream. Uh, LinkedIn, is, LinkedIn is weird. Facebook Live is super easy. You just go and you 
click the live button and you're live. Uh, LinkedIn had to make it a little bit difficult. Good old Microsoft. So you have to use a streaming platform. So I use Switcher directly and then I tie that with Restream so I can stream this live on Facebook and YouTube as well. Um, the second, second, more like 10th thing that I, that I wanna talk about content wise and comment wise is you have to be responding to every single comment that is left on your post as quickly as you can. So respond to people, not just because it helps the algorithm, because it's a nice thing to do. And you want to, you want to let people know that you appreciate the fact they're commenting on your stuff. So always, always, always respond to every single comment that is left on your posts. Okay. And then with that said, if you have trouble writing, okay, we're almost done. Man, I have so much to share with you guys and we're already at 30 minutes. So I'll wrap this up here. Couple other things. I keep hearing people saying that they suck at creating content. I hear that all the time. I'm horrible, I'm horrible at creating content. What do I do, what do I do? And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Start by posting comments on people's posts. So write comments and turn those into posts. It's super simple, you don't have to overthink it. Leave five comments a day, meaningful comments on people's posts, people in your industry, people that you want as clients, prospects, whatever, industry influencers, but not the huge ones, ones that'll actually be relevant for you. And turn those comments that you leave people into posts. It's super simple. So if you're having, you know, a blockage in your brain on writer's block on what to post, just do that. Just start writing comments for people and then turn those comments into posts. Super simple. Another thing is, uh, Lynn, Vimeo is good. I use Vimeo for all of my videos that I put on my website. So I have Vimeo Pro. And if, uh, you know, all the videos that you guys see, if you go to my websites on the blog and then on the Luminetics homepage, you will see Vimeo. Well, you won't, you don't know it's Vimeo, but it is Vimeo. So Vimeo Pro is awesome. Okay. And then the last thing is you guys can always outsource content. So we obviously create content at Mod Girl for people, uh, for businesses mainly, companies, and then the individuals within the companies and our rates start at $5,000 a month to do that, which obviously isn't affordable for everyone. But if you want to get help with your content and you feel like you don't have it in you to write content and you want someone to do it for you, you can always outsource this. You can easily go and hire a super affordable freelancer at uh, upwork.com or, uh, free. And you can hire someone who knows how to write social media and LinkedIn posts and they can write it for you at a very affordable rate. Also, if you guys have not heard of 98 buck social, this is an option too for you to write uh, LinkedIn, not just LinkedIn, social media content in general on your behalf. They will do that for you at super affordable, like 150 bucks a month or something ridiculous. It's not about leadership content, but it's enough to keep your, your channels updated. But again, it's not what we do and what I'm recommending that you do when it comes to creating thought leadership content, but it does get you started. So that's an option too. So there's no excuse for you guys to not post content is basically what I'm trying to tell you. So just do it. Nike, Nike said, just do it. And if you want help, you can always outsource it. A couple hundred bucks a month, even a hundred dollars a month. Everyone can afford that. If you're trying to grow your personal brand, your business and earn more revenue, it is well worth it. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I am finished here, I think. So let me know if you guys have anything else for me. Again, uh, next Thursday, I will be going live on LinkedIn. I would love for you guys to join me. So I will post a link in the uh, comment section here shortly, and then we will be posting about it tomorrow as well. And I will be revealing my five simple steps to growing your personal brand on LinkedIn. And I think you are going to really enjoy it because it's fun and educational and it's for LinkedIn, right? So I will post the link in the comments here shortly. And then also we will post that tomorrow. So be on the lookout for it. And then as always, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you all um, for, let's see, Laura says, I like the vote by reactions the first time I see it, then everyone copies it and it's annoying. I remember that post, Minesweeper. It's your duty to test this for us. <laughs> Exactly, Laura. It is my duty to test things for y'all. And that's why I do it. I am the tester. So um, Laura will also help you guys. Thank you, Laura. So Laura says she'd be happy to help anyone 
who wants to outsource their social media content. And I can vouch for Laura. She's amazing and so much fun and an awesome human being and great at what she does. So click on the link that Laura just posted and check her out. And per usual, if there's anything I can do to help you guys, let me know. Like I mentioned earlier, we are now focused on um, building influential personal brands for high-performing leaders and teams, executive teams, sales teams, SVPs. So if you know of anyone who could use our services, I would love an introduction and happy to uh, reward you for that with a 15% uh, affiliate commission. And of course, keep me posted on what else I can help you guys with. If you have any certain topics you want me to talk about next time. And be on the lookout for my content tomorrow and check out my LinkedIn webinar next week and we will go from there. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me as always. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend and enjoy the rest of your Thursday and Friday and we'll talk soon. Okay.